Okay, continuing our biology and chemistry series, we're going to talk about the properties of water. Water is one of those things that is unique to this planet to have liquid water here, and it is part of why we have life on this planet in the first place. So let's talk about why water is so special. First of all, water is a polar molecule which again, remember the polar covalent bond is, bonds, that means that oxygen is more electronegative, so it has a slightly um, negative charge near the oxygen because it's drawing those electrons in and a slightly positive charge near the hydrogen. Please make sure that you can draw this structure and that you understand it um, because that structure and that polarity makes a huge difference in how water acts. One of the key characteristics of water and water-based solutions called aqueous solutions is the pH, which is the measure of relative hydrogen ions in concentration. Acids have a pH below 7, bases have a pH above 7, and neutral has a pH of exactly 7. Here's an example of the pH scale. And what you see here is that the farther you get away from 7, the more acidic or basic it is. So if you take a look, you know, gastric fluid, which is stomach acid, is very, very acid, and it's a very strong acid. It's far away from 7. Milk, not so much with the strong acid. It's not neutral, but it's pretty close. Same with lye. Lye is extremely basic, and so it's far away from 7. Seawater is only slightly basic, and so it's closer to 7. So pretty much the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. The higher the pH, the more basic it is. Okay, so water can form solutions, and there's lots of different things that go with solutions, but I'm going to talk about solutions in general as a mixture. Mixtures can be separated using physical means like evaporation, centrifugation, and electrolysis. Each portion of the mixture retains its own unique characteristics and properties. Solutions are a type of mixture called a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous means that it's the same throughout. In other words, it doesn't have big bulky particles that you can say, aha, there's a different part. So solutes are the substance that are dissolved in the solvent. And the solvent is the substance that does the dissolving of the solute. It's kind of a circular argument, but bear with me on this one. So if we're making salt water, salt is the solute and the solvent is water. Water molecules can bond with and attract other water molecules using those hydrogen bonds we talked about in the last lecture. The polar nature of the water molecule creates an electrostatic, almost like uh, magnetism, charge that allows water molecules to regularly orient themselves to one another to form a stable fluid. So let's talk about all of those hydrogen bonds, the polar nature of mo uh, water molecules, etc gives us the six primary properties of water. The first one is that water absorbs heat. The diagram here shows the uptake of heat by one kilogram of water as it passes from ice at negative 50 degrees Celsius to steam at temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius. And this affects the temperature of the sample. In A is the rise in temperature as the ice absorbs the heat. B on the chart shows the absorption of the heat of fusion. In other words, it's starting to melt, but it hasn't melted yet. C is the rise in the temperature as water is a liquid as it's absorbing heat. D is the amount of energy it's absorbing in order to do the heat of vaporization. In other words, it's becoming a gas. And E is the absorption of heat as it is in its gas or steam form. When it's in its gas or steam form, we call it evaporation. Evaporation is the primary way our bodies are cooled through sweating. Evaporation also helps to cool off the surface of the earth. And a special type of evaporation happens in plants. It's called transpiration. 
So the reason why it cools us down is exactly like what you saw in this chart. See where D is? D is absorbing a huge quantity of heat in order to change from a liquid to a gas. So as that happens, that heat gets pulled away from whatever it's cooling. In this case, your skin, if you're sweating. So as the sweat evaporates, it's pulling that heat directly from your skin, which is why sweating makes you feel cooler. Water also can expand when it freezes. This allows aquatic organisms to live in winter time because the water will freeze from the top down, not the bottom up. It is one of the few substances on the planet that is less dense as a solid than it is as a liquid. Actually, the densest water on the planet is in the deep ocean. It's at four degrees Celsius, so it's well above the freezing point. The last property of water that we're going to talk about in this lecture is the, that water is the universal solvent. That's kind of true, kind of not true, but anything that is polar or ionic can dis be dissolved in water. Fats are nonpolar and also hydrophobic, which means they fear water. They can't be dissolved in water, and that's why um, oil and vinegar don't mix, and the oil will just float on top. So those are the m main key points of the properties of water. There's a few others, but these are the two, these are the biggies. Um, and so those are the ones that I would like you to know. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to go over them with you. I know this is a short lecture compared to the others, but you know, they get longer, they get shorter. It's just how it is. But thanks. Have a great week.